Okay, we're here at Intel's Forecast 2012. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com, and uh, Chris is joining us. Chris is known in the community in the cloud as uh, the man, the myth, the legend. Now out on your own, and you're with your own firm, research firm. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you, and I re recently launched this uh, research firm by name Rishi Dot Research. Uh, well, what I, I've been doing the uh, role of an analyst for a long time, but I was doing as an independent. Uh, I thought I'll give a structure to it and so that I can scale up. Uh, uh, the current generation of uh, analyst firms are either on the conservative side, where they sort of drag down the IT, or the so-called new generation of uh, analyst firms, what they do is they talk about uh, newer technologies and other things without really understanding how it will, how they can, uh, IT can seamlessly move from the existing technology to the new one. So their push sort of causes disruption. Uh, I'm positioning myself as someone who understands technology as well as business world so that I can help uh, organization move to newer technologies without any disruption. Yeah, and we've been seeing this with the cloud business. We were commenting last night and we're seeing it today here at the Cloud Expo where, you know, cloud's evolving from, you know, hyped up, cloud washing to, oh my God, what's the reality? You got hybrid, private, public, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. You have all this massive change driven by a market that's just growing very rapidly in terms of you know, demand, in terms of this demand for disruption. Um, we're just not seeing a lot of it in cloud, we're seeing different approaches. So there's a diverse set of benefits that are coming, but there's no real one benefit to a buyer. Um, and then you've got things like big data, which is an obvious winner, mm -hmm. exploding and changing the world. So you have all these dimensions, this perfect storm. So, what, so one, tell us what your feeling is around this perfect storm around what's happening in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And what do you see right now in this world today as the key elements of the, the cloud world and, and how that's changing? Um, uh, right now, I am still seeing cloud washing going on. It's been uh, uh, pushed by all sorts of vendors with all sorts of vested interests. But that is causing some level of un uncertainty. But I think uh, uh, end customers are becoming more and more smarter than uh, what they were probably a year back when the uh, FUD unleashed by these traditional vendors sort of like confused them completely. Now they understand. Uh, the, uh, also, the, one of the mistakes some of the cloud vendors did in the initial stages is they talked about only the economics. But for me, the biggest advantage of cloud for any organization of any size is agility. So if they had focused on agility from the beginning, probably they could have sent a very good story and we could have avoided a lot of confusion that happened in the past. And uh, people are understanding the value, people are understanding that IT department has a role, but they are not the face of the organization. Yeah. They understand that business users are the face of the organization, and they, uh, they want to empower those users directly without uh, getting them dragged into too much uh, time wasting, time consuming processes, uh, like get, getting their requirements ready and stuff like that. So I think cloud is helping them do that, and uh, they, they are uh, jumping into it. The, uh, the infrastructure as a service has sort of matured, uh, giving, paving way to both public and private cloud. People see private cloud as a first step towards their uh, future uh, large scale adoption. Extension of, of their data center. Yes, exactly. It's exactly. all it is. They optimize, the, it's a very highly optimized uh, use of uh, data center. But they see that this is a first uh, first stepping stone for the future use of public cloud. And what about hybrid? What are you seeing happening with the hybrid? Yeah, uh, so like, uh, like since okay, the, since got the extension of the data center with private, the next step is yeah, play out the, in the public. That, that, that's what I'm saying. They, they're seeing private, private cloud as a first step. So the hybrid cloud is going to help them move some of the non-critical workloads to public uh, public clouds now. But they eventually, in the future, I think I expect most of the workloads. There will still be some workloads which will stay inside the data center because of regulatory concerns and a few other uh, issues. But most of the workloads will move to public cloud services in the future. I think. Um, the word agile you mentioned is really a great way to think at the, at the highest level of abstraction. You know, if people can think about agile, that will define essentially how and what kind of cloud and how their environment goes, because they can match agile to the business. Exactly. Um, so with that in mind, I, I want to bring up something that's been a key driver of the past two years, mainly this past uh, 12 months in particular, is the role of big data. Mm -hmm. So we saw Hadoop become in, the open source community grow very rapidly. Now um, you can't go to Hadoop World or Hadoop Summit without a complete sellout. Big data value proposition is pretty obvious. You use data to enhance your business. Mm -hmm. But there's emphasis around real time and business analytics, which is interesting because it's mm -hmm. not like a tech conversation. Mm -hmm. That's a business conversation. Mm -hmm. So since your firm specializing in that con convergence between business and apps and tech, what's your angle on big data? My angle, uh, uh, big data is important. Now there's a thinking going on that big data is for only niche group of organizations. 
that's uh, uh, that's going to change. Almost every single organization in this world is going to rely on big data. And uh, the, uh, there is an interesting idea, uh, idea I have been putting forward regarding big, big data. People are focusing on storage. People are uh, focusing on processing uh, technologies like Hadoop analytics. But there are more other things which are very important, which organizations should start looking at. One thing I'm pushing is data quality. Though they see they, they do understand data quality from the traditional data warehousing days, but uh, when, when you go to big data, data quality is going to be really, really critical. And they, uh, that is one thing they need to focus. And another uh, thing I have been pushing uh, on big data is data obesity problem. I call it data obesity problem. Mm -hmm. The thing is, storage is cheap. Yeah, getting data in, uh, in, uh, into the organization or into your uh, IT is uh, much cheap, uh, cheaper. But processing it is expensive. Yeah. So if you indiscriminately get, collect all data without uh, really cutting down on the fat, yeah. soon you will face what I call as data obesity problem, which is not only expensive, it also causes. Well, we also you issues. might want to add in a term that we've been kicking around called data exhaust. Mm -hmm. So you know this it's you know can be dirty or you can clean it up. And data exhaust essentially random data that was never captured before mm -hmm. that you can now capture with low cost batch systems mm -hmm. like Hadoop. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, the data. So the data problem is interesting. So, so how are you seeing how companies can leverage data? Because now, you know, companies like Cloudera, which is the big data company, the leader in Hadoop, they actually have the word cloud in their name, mm -hmm. Cloudera. So, mm -hmm. so big data and cloud go hand in glove. How yeah. do you see that fitting into the cloud architectures? Okay. Uh, uh, cloud off, uh, offers a much easier, uh, one of the biggest advantage of cloud with big data is the uh, elasticity. And uh, so that sort of makes, takes a lot of pain points away from organizations. And it's a perfect match uh, in my opinion. And, uh, but people right now are f f more focused on uh, issues like uh, storing data in the cloud, analytics and stuff like that. But we need to think beyond that. I've been pushing uh, platform as a service vendors to look beyond uh, uh, what they are doing now. Today's platform as a service is sort of more focused for scaling the users. But uh, they are, uh, these services are not uh, ready to uh, face the needs of uh, yeah. scaling the data. Let's talk about past platform mm -hmm. as a service because mm -hmm. you know I've been on record as saying platform as a service is a race to zero if you do not understand the differentiation of the value because most of the people in the past were hosters and they're in there and they understand the commodity game. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of winners in that business, but the benefit of PaaS is to have that agility. Mm -hmm. And so there's, and the, the smart money's moving into that differentiation where, hey, I'll go, I'll go low cost hardware, commodity hardware and gear, but I'm gonna use things like big data and software as a differentiator. Can you comment on that dynamic? Because that's where the action is. Yeah, definitely. The, 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 that's going to be the kind, of infrastructure is commoditized. Uh, the the, the uh, money is to be made at the higher value uh, values, and uh, the, when when you look at higher values, even uh, this, uh, platform as a service space is getting commoditized because of uh, open source projects that are uh, 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 there. So uh, where are they going to make money? It has to be from uh, somewhere around big data. That's where the money is, and they need to find ways. There are some interesting things where, which you can build around big data with big big data and cloud. For example, I recently came across a company called Flow.net. They, they, they have an interesting services. They have a message bus kind of a service, which uh, sends insights to all the applications. Right now, they are doing it for some media media properties, but I, I see a lot of potential for enterprises and uh, other organizations. See, if you have insights flowing in like a, like a message bus, applications can t tap into it and they can do wonderful things. So I think uh, soon we will see evolution of uh, a next generation of apps called intelligent apps, which are self-organizers taking advantage of the insights that is available from a data as a service. So one of the hot trends that we're tracking, and, and it's not out in the mainstream yet, is DevOps. Mm -hmm. Um, DevOps is a nice community that's developing essentially developers who are becoming more ops savvy, mm -hmm. um, whether either through frameworks and other tools that are in the past market. What's your take on DevOps and where is that market in, in, in the map? Okay. The one to scale, one to 10, 10 being mature, is that one uh, to the two? Uh, like, three, I think I, 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 the statement six. I am going to make is going to get controversial and my friends in Twitter are going to really get back at me. DevOps is just a transitionary uh, idea. Future is past, no ops. So, uh, the, of course, there, there will still be operations going on, but operations will go into the background. Right now in IT, op, ops are the uh, face of the IT. What is going to happen is, so now we are in the DevOps phase where developers are empowered to do the operations, 
in a more programmatic way. Soon, like with the availability of services, uh, fast and other hosted services, operations are going to completely go, in, uh, go into the background. Uh, it, it is the responsibility of the service providers, uh, provider to take care of the operations. And, uh, so what you're saying, if I can understand you correctly, just to make sure we get the Twitter mm -hmm. uh, juice going here, um, that pass is going to abstract away the complexity yeah, of com ops, ops for the developer. For, for so the most of, uh, most of, the, most developers. of the developers, because there will still yeah, be the Ruby guys there will still be niche JavaScript. cases where like they would want to go and uh, get their hands dirty to take advantage of uh, some of the underlying complexities because there is uh, they, they can take advantage of the complexity but that is going to go away for most of the developers so yeah. uh, it's it's going to be fast it's interesting it's, you know we we actually following devops because we're really interested in, in the benefits what happened and i would agree with you that pass opportunity is to differentiate that because developers are not ops guys mm -hmm. configuration manager all that stuff is like a foreign mm -hmm. foreign world to them mm -hmm. um so I, I would agree with that the thing that i would see that from a business perspective being agile is it's an organizational issue that the organizational behavior of, of companies is becomes the DevOps mm -hmm. equation. So mm -hmm. it's not so much tech. If PaaS fills that void, that's one angle. Mm -hmm. The other one is it's still the operational issues, compliance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the normal ops, there, like ops a, can't go down. It's not. It's not yeah, going it can't down. Fail. It's, it's definitely. <laughs> yeah, Developers ops, have to fail to success. Yeah, ops cannot go yeah. down. And whatever I'm saying, the past checking over, uh, completely abstracting away ops is not going to happen anytime soon. Like uh, we are still having people using traditional data center, and they are worried about cloud. So the, the transition the is going to be long, so that it itself becomes an era. Okay, so, so given that, so I, so let's just say that past does that because people who can abstract away complexities always make money, mm -hmm. and so because they solve a big problem. So what areas would you say for entrepreneurs out there and de and developers can they get started on big gaping white spaces? What's what do you see as opportunities to work on right away? Uh, I would say like uh, if possible, if we can attack the problem of next generation of past around big data, there is a million dollar a billion dollar opportunity out there. Yes, data is going uh, all the data is going to drive the world. And the apps, see, uh, we have read, uh, read them in science fiction about uh, having uh, uh, robots take over the world and stuff like that. But it's going to happen pretty soon than what we expect. And uh, uh, ro they are not go uh, ro robots are not going to take over the world, but we are going to ha see a very high level of optimization in our processes. Pro probably the human intervention will be very, very, very limited. So uh, we, are, we are going to jump, uh, the, the jump is going to, it's not a, uh, going to be a gradual jump. It's going to, the jump is going to come, uh, come suddenly. So if we can uh, focus on the picture and build platforms that will help developers build those intelligent apps, which can wo uh, work in a self-organizing way, I think that, that, is, that is a billion dollar opportunity. Final question for you, and thanks for, for sharing your insight here, inside Silicon Angle's uh, the companion cube on, on location in, in New York City for Cloud Expo. What's going to change in the developer world over the next couple of years? What, what's, uh, as developers, as more and more developers come in, we're seeing trends like Node.js, where you can get JavaScript on the server side, giving them more a little bit more headroom on the development side. Um, with all this application change, with mobility, um, with apps, corporate app stores, you know, software, SOA like in architectures, uh, catalogs of services in IT. What's going to change in the developer community? Okay. Uh, so before I talk about what is going to change in the developer community, I, I have to briefly tell about what is changing in the consumer side of the things. So uh, gone are those days where we uh, consume applic uh, monolithic applications. Even uh, right now we are in a transitionary phase, but soon it will be con con uh, uh, applications will be composition of services. So like uh, I will, uh, as a user, I will have applications. Uh, I will uh, take the services that are available and build my own application. Uh, that meets exactly meets my need. I'm not going to change my way to sort of uh, uh, meet the needs uh, needs of the applications available in the market, but I'm going to have my applications in the way I want. So uh, developers are, uh, are going to build, uh, build apps for those things. So that means there will be developers will be polyglot developers. They need to focus on more than one language. So I think that's a, a okay. pretty critical thing. Krish, thank you for sharing your time. We'll be right back with our next guest here at the special on location at Forecast 2012 with Intel. I'll be right back. Thanks.